special meeting of the Glendale City Council for August 27, 2019. May we have roll call? Councilmember Devine? Here. Garapetian? Here. Quintero? Here. Agajanian? Present. Mayor Najarian? Here. May we have your report? The agenda for the August 27, 2019 special public meeting of the City Council was posted on Monday, August 22, 2019 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. First item, please. Director of Community Development regarding Art and Entertainment Distri District Conceptual Design Selection, 1A motion selecting a preferred conceptual design alternative for the reimagination of the Art and Entertainment District on Otsach Avenue and the nearby alley, and authorizing staff to advance the Phase 2 design and technical development of this contract. Ms. Beers. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, we were before you on August 28th of 2018. I can't believe it's it's been a year. I, I had to look at that date a couple of times to make sure that I was uh, looking at it clearly, but it goes extremely fast, as, as you know. Uh, to seek your authorization to go into an, um, an agreement with Studio 111, and at that time we also talked to the City Council regarding the phased approach and that we would be before you each time to seek your direction um, and your input related to each of the phases. Um, phase one has been completed. Uh, staff uh, will be giving you a presentation related uh, to phase one and ask you uh, regarding phase two and if you'd like to move forward to that next phase. Um, Jennifer Hiramoto is going to be driving this presentation and I'm sure Mr. Calvert will have some commentary related to uh, some of the design aspects. So with that, Ms. Hiramoto. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, as Ms. Spears mentioned, the item before you is really a decision point um, as the city council looks to the future of the arts and entertainment district. Just by way of background, I know that we have a new face to, to the council since we've started some of these discussions. Um, it was about three years ago, three years ago, almost today, because it was a hot day like this, uh, that the City Council directed us to move forward. We closed a portion of Artsock Avenue, then Maryland, uh, to create a Paseo. And really the intent has always been to create a more pedestrian-friendly environment that, uh, that builds upon the Arts and Entertainment District. A lot has changed over that past three, three years, and I just want to highlight some of the momentum. If you think back to that Three years ago, the Central Park, or excuse me, the Downtown Central Library had just completed its renovation. Uh, the Antius Theater had just opened up. Uh, since then, we now have Gen Cree and Barbecue that is now open. The Lemley Theater and Lofts is complete. Uh, and now up and running along with Panda Inn. Um, we have the Central Park block redesign and all of the momentum with the Armenian American Museum and Cultural Center. All of these are building upon the momentum and really presenting opportunities for the Arts and Entertainment District. I also wanted to highlight that we now have the, uh, a lease signed for a very critical vacancy, um, Studio Movie Grill. I know that we have representatives today um, from, from the theater. Uh, that also signifies a very important uh, vacancy that is now filled. I bring up all of this because, again, today's pr uh, presentation really builds upon the momentum that we've seen and uh, really works upon the Council's vision to transform Artsakh Avenue into a pedestrian-friendly arts and entertainment district. Uh, today, we will hear from Studio 111. Uh, the team is here. Uh, we also have members of the traffic design team, uh, Lynn Scott, Law, and Greenspan, but Bradley Calvert will be walking us through the different designs. Really the question at hand for the council is, uh, which of the two theme or two uh, design schemes would you like to pursue? Uh, and it's very possible that you don't want to pursue any of these, and that's okay too. That is always an option, uh, or it may be a blended approach. Uh, we will walk through the different design schemes. We ask that you keep in mind, though, that this really uh, would today would close the uh, phase phase one, and we would then go, if, uh, if approved, into the second phase, which would include uh, more development of these designs. So we ask that you keep an open mind if there are elements within public art that you would like to see or public furniture, uh, there will be a time for that in the next stage as well. Um, so with that, I would like to turn it, turn it over to Bradley Calvert, and he'll walk you through some of these designs. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. Uh, as mentioned, excuse me, 
turn that off? We have uh, two options before us today, a one-way shared street option and a public plaza option. Uh, as mentioned, we, we really want to focus in on making a selection between one of these two. You're going to see a lot of furniture and, and applied art to the street, uh, even vegetation in some cases. Um, those are things that we'll get to uh, at a future council date. Right now, we're kind of considering those placeholders. We would welcome any comments that you may have about any of the existing things that we're showing, but we really want to focus on which of these two options we want to pursue in the next level of design. Uh, so looking at this okay. looking at this first graphic, this is showing the entire uh, street in its existing condition uh, with Wilson all the way to the right, Harvard all the way to the left, uh, north is facing right. You can see in the pink those are the existing storefronts that the city, city owns and that gray area in front is that temporary plaza, that pilot project that we are currently uh, engaged in right now. This first option, the one-way one shared street, this is really trying to create pockets of, of open space for, for pedestrians, uh, areas for gathering, means to activate some of the existing storefronts. So what you see here, the pink areas, are essentially the extensions from the existing sidewalk that is there today. Um, this narrows down the travel lane. All travel would be going south. Um, it creates opportunities for gathering, again, activation for those existing storefronts, any future businesses that may be there. And there's a number of traffic calming features that are also included as part of this. Uh, access would remain the same to both garages uh, as it's currently configured. Uh, you'll see in, a, in the plaza option that that would actually be an incurred cost for um, the southern portion of this, this segment. So we'd like to zoom in on the northern portion of the one-way shared option, and you can see how the, uh, the area can be activated with seating areas. There's opportunities for trellises and, and kind of sun shading devices for outdoor seating, possibly performance, or kiosk. That's, that would be on that far right side of the, of the view there along Wilson. Um, you can see there are also some exist or there's some proposed curb cutouts as well. We wanted to preserve opportunities for delivery uh, along the street. There are businesses there today. There could be more in the future. Uh, also, a curb cut out there at the center for food trucks when we're activating that larger plaza area, or what could be a larger plaza. This that that center portion that you see, that entire portion of the street would be raised, or what we would call tabling. Uh, this would be done so that when traffic is moving southbound, this would help slow it down as it's moving through the space, recognizing that this is to be a pedestrian-oriented environment, a public gathering space. And as we'll show in another slide, that area can also be closed off to create a full plaza uh, during any special events that we may have. So we still have that option that we currently have today. Uh, to, the, to the south, off to the, further to the left there of the page, you can see, uh, again, that, that sidewalk is extended out, more gathering areas. Uh, we do preserve a right turn lane uh, onto Broadway, as well as continuing traveling southbound. This is what that street would look like with that temporary plaza for large-scale events. Um, Again, this would function very similar as, as it does today. We would have op options to either extend uh, cables to close off that area so the traffic cannot continue through, or they could be bollards. That's, uh, again, kind of a next level design solution that we'll investigate. So here is the current condi conditions of the north side of the street. This is looking north. And this is what it could look like with the one-way one -way street uh, uh, in place, not during the temporary activation. You can see how that intersection is tabled. It ramps up and then down, uh, again, trying to slow traffic. Those two large boxes that you see off to the right of that ramp, that could house any kind of enclosure device that when we want to activate this street and turn this into a plaza, uh, we could extend some sort of uh, cabling across there to pre prevent traffic from going through. Um, this would also carry a signage plan with it as well. We understand that if we cut off traffic flow through this street on special events, that we would need to have some sort of signage to make sure that drivers coming through would not find themselves in a situation that would be difficult to get out of. Uh, but we would still be able to let traffic flow through the parking garage on the north side and then come out on the south side so that they could still make their way through. Uh, off to the left, you can see some of that activation, things like ping pong tables, seating, art, um, other outdoor gathering areas could be incorporated into that. <clears throat> this would be with the street closed off for a 
temporary event. As you can see, cables coming across to prevent drivers coming through. Uh, in this case, this could be a farmer's market that's activating that, something of a larger scale event. Not, not dissimilar from what we saw uh, earlier this year when we hosted that charrette where we activated it with food trucks and music and, and other elements. The southern portion, this is what incorporates what we would call a chicane. And rather than tabling the intersection here, we would be trying to slow down the traffic by essentially diverting their flow a little bit. You can see in the center, as that traffic's coming along the southbound on the lower portion of the page curbside, it would then have to move uh, a little further west and then continue south. That would slow the traffic down by essentially making them have to do a slight uh, turn, if you will, a jog in the street. Uh, this street presents some unique opportunities in creating some pretty large gathering spaces, particularly in front of the existing parking garage. Um, and as we'll see in some renderings, this could be a great place for performance venues. This could be a great place for kiosk. Uh, there's not a lot of retail in the southern portion of, of the design, and this is a great chance for us to bring something in like kiosk to help activate that space. Uh, you can also see in the center there at Broadway and the interse intersection of Artstock and Broadway that we could activate that, that intersection with some sort of applied art. And that would help pedestrians as they're moving through this space, whether north or south, to encourage them to continue to move on to that next segment of the block, uh, really tying the whole thing together. <clears throat> This is the existing condition of that southern portion of the block looking from the, the pedestrian bridge. And this is what it could, could look like with that chicane. You can see is that, that jog um, encouraging traffic to kind of slow down as they move through this space. We do recognize that there's a lot of pick up and drop off here with the existing home goods store, leaving a little bit of extra flexibility, a little bit extra room so that traffic could still pull off to the side. Goods can be picked up, deliveries can be made, and traffic can still flow through while still creating a, a very enhanced public, public gathering space. Uh, you can see one there off to the lower portion, the lower right hand side of the page, and then off to the left, you can see the, those stages those performance spaces, as well as the kiosks. Uh, again, all of these are kind of placeholders right now as we continue to uh, investigate what kind of programming and art and design features could go in. But it's really about creating these pockets of spaces to help activate the street. And we are going to show a walkthrough video that will take you from uh, the north side through the south side, to help give you kind of a first-hand perspective of what this street could look like. So this is looking south existing conditions. This would be on a day where traffic would still be able to come through. You can see that, that curb cut has room for tra or food trucks. Um, you can see traffic there off to the left. This is the raised or tabled portion of the segment. Um, again, bringing that flush with the sidewalk. This does a number of things. In addition to slowing down traffic, it also recognizes that pedestrians and automob automobiles are on the same uh, surface here. They, they are they're equally important um, and to help create a contiguous flow when that becomes a public plaza. Again, the north block existing. And this could be on the event day when this segment is closed. Um, you can see those cables coming across, uh, this tabled intersection now becoming part of that plaza. Uh, great opportunity for farmers markets or other temporary events that may, we, we may want to host in this area. This would maintain the existing size of that, that open space that we have right now as well. Conditions today along the south block. And you can see how that's been enhanced by adding that, that gathering space, outdoor seating, public art could be incorporated. Uh, this is where the street jogs, creating that chicane. As you're coming across, there's opportunities for uh, games, art installations, stages, as we had mentioned before. You can see the kiosk to the left there. <clears throat> And as signaled by the large French bulldog that we have here, this is a great opportunity for a, a large-scale art installation, something that could be very impactful and almost serve as a gateway. Doesn't have to be a French bulldog. A lot of things that we can investigate as we move through this design process. I'm sorry, which one was that? Where was that? Uh, on the, uh, let's actually go back. Do you want to show that? Yeah, yeah keep going. Just White thing. Yeah, keep going a little bit more so you can see it. Right there. So, so that could be a large-scale art installation of, of any kind, really kind of creating a gateway as you're coming through the space. A 
I believe at one point we had a bear in there as well. So and any animal would work. <clears throat> So the plaza option, this is really focused on creating two large plazas. Um, and after, uh, as we close this out, we'll discuss some of the pros and cons between the two. Um, in this case, you can see existing conditions. Again, the, the pink highlighting those existing storefronts, that gray area off to the right side of the page, that's the existing plaza. Again, we would maintain that, but we would also create that plaza on the southern block as well. Um, as we zoom into the northern block, this is really about making some improvements to that existing space, making it a permanent feature. Uh, right now we do have some temporary planters blocking that off, but this would inco incorporate enhancements to the pavement, um, additional seating, uh, really trying to create a sense of permanence, if you will. Uh, this is the current conditions of that. Uh, this would be the enhanced version. You can see that pavement changing. This can be done in a number of ways as we've discussed through the design process. We could paint the pavement. We could have uh, essentially thermal plastic install art installations that could last for one, three, five years depending on what we put on there that could be rotated in and out. But it means to really create that kind of sense of permanence to that area. Um, off to the left you can see there's, there's a seating area What could also uh, potentially serve as a performance stage, uh, lights coming across. Many of these features are interchangeable between the plaza. You'll see some of the art installations, the overhang, um, in this case lights and another image that will show will have umbrellas. That's something that could still be incorporated even if it is a one-way street. It just needs to be hung high enough to allow emergency vehicles to come through. So the south block, this is where we would be creating that new plaza. In either of these cases, we're not uh, raising the street in this case. We are uh, essentially treating the existing surface, unlike in the prior option where we had that raised street that would help create that kind of contiguous plaza. This would require some reconfiguration of the, of the traffic flow to the existing parking garage because we would effectively be doing the same thing that we've done to the north block here where traffic would have to uh, 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 be able to come in and go out on uh, either end of the street. They would not be able to flow through, obviously. This would be looking north from the, uh, the, the south block, and this is what it would look like with that enhanced plaza. Uh, essentially, between these two, right now we have about 6,900 square feet of public space. That's what that existing plaza provides us on the north end. Um, this option two between the two plazas would give us about 17,300 square feet of, of public space, pedestrian space. Option one, the one-way street, would provide 18,700 on the days when, when traffic can flow through. And on special events, it would actually provide us 21,800 square feet. So we do get a little bit more square footage from option one, the one-way street, than we do from option two on the plazas. And that's mainly because those plazas are dictated, uh, the location and size are dictated by the access to the parking garages that we're attempting to maintain. Uh, one of the other challenges that we do have with this option two is that we would be investing in two very large uh, public spaces. Uh, keeping in mind that we do have the, the Central Park block uh, in the works as well. That's creating a lot of open space that could potentially compete with one another. Um, by creating two permanent large plazas, uh, there would be a, a large responsibility for us to make sure that those remain activated, remain programmed, um, and would be a pretty significant investment in order to do that. One thing that option one does help us with and does provide us with is it does not preclude creating a plaza at a future date, especially on that northern portion. Um, Right now, we are lacking that kind of critical mass of activation, if you will. We have some uh, retail there, we have some restaurant, we have some shops that do bring patrons, and it does help activate that space. But in order to really make these two large plazas successful, we would need much greater activation. So this option one would actually provide us with that opportunity to, uh, in a way, kind of incrementally move towards potentially a solution such as this. It would help create buzz, it would help create activity and energy at this street by, the, by redesigning it through that one-way option while still having the opportunity to close that street, but not uh, require us to fully invest into creating two very large plazas. Um, and as our consultant studio 111 will we'll mention here in just a minute, they'll break down the cost and what that difference is between that programming, the additional work that would need to go into the garage as well. As part of this, this is not part of the, the decision today, but we wanted to make sure the council knew that we have not forgotten about the public alley that's directly to the west, uh, particularly on that north, on that north block. Um, this is the, uh, the existing conditions today, and what we would be looking at here, 
see if it'll, there we go, would be some improvements to both the, the pavement. This could come by way of an art installation. You can see um, some opportunities for rotating wall art on some of the blank walls that we have there, working with potentially some of the vendors there to reconfigure and, and create opportunities uh, for activation and sales uh, along this alley, really turning this into an intimate public space. You can see some of the, the opportunities for cafe lights that could be strung across some of the signage as well. Um, this is not nothing that we, we are, are looking for a decision on today, but we just wanted to let council know that we are still working towards this and that next iteration we'll see some, some much more flushed out ideas along with this. Uh, so for, um, for here, I would like to turn this over to Alan Pullman. He is our representative from Studio 111. This is the consultant uh, design team who has been developing these concepts. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and council members. It's a pleasure to be back talk about this exciting project. I'm going to try to quickly present some of our analysis that we did, thank you, um, for these two options. And I will start with traffic. I'm sure a question is, how do these options, these schemes affect traffic? You probably can't read this, but on page, well, I don't have a page number. Oh, yes, I do. Page 28 of your booklet. You might be able to see these numbers. And, and what we had our traffic consultant do, and they are here today if you have any follow-up questions, we had them analyze nine intersections uh, surrounding uh, Artsakh. And you can see those nine intersections uh, listed on the left. And there are th four columns that they looked at. The four columns are the um, existing uh, traffic conditions at the intersections currently, and it's analyzed uh, under LOS, or level of service. Anything from A to D is acceptable. F is not. Sorry, so the, I'm going to interrupt. Who is the traffic consultant again? Lynn Scott, Lynn Scott Long Greenspan. Okay. And they are, as I said here, if you have a follow-up question. Not uh, the previous. Thank you. Not the previous. I'm sorry. When I say it's a long story. Okay. okay. I'm okay with them. I okay. was not okay with another traffic group that you had uh, retained for earlier discussions, but I have no problem with these. Okay. Regarding the traffic counts and uh, intersection level of service. I think I understand, yes. Okay. So they, they um, did, we think, a good job analyzing this. Again, that first column is the existing conditions. Actually, they looked at the existing conditions prior to the pilot project. The second column is an estimation um, of um, um, future demand without the project. Third column looks at the uh, future in year 2022 with uh, the one-way option and the future year 2022 with the plaza option. And just in summary, uh, none, of, none of the an analysis shows that there will be any um, effect, negative effect on any of these intersections surrounding the site on either of these two options. And in fact, because of some configuration, uh, the, the actual intersection at uh, Wilson and Artsakh like, might have got a little bit better with either one of the options. <coughs> so that's really looking at the traffic impact um, surrounding the site. Now, we also did look at what happens on Artsakh itself. And um, our engineers and ourselves did notice that there will be some, in the plaza option, we'll call it some uh, dead end uh, side effects, meaning that because cars are, we're creating, uh, extending this dead end condition that you currently have on the pilot project on the south block, that could cause um, some confusion with some drivers, even though we will improve signage. It also, though, will cause some friction with delivery trucks because uh, delivery trucks happen all day. Now, there is an alley on the north block, which helps the north block, but um, trucks are still coming, FedEx and deliveries all through the day, and they're having to do a U-turn. On the south block, it's even more pronounced because the marketplace is a fairly has some fairly large retail units, um, and they do not have an alley, so all of their loading does come off of Artsakh, and you can, you can see they have, um, well, a loading uh, well, it's hard to see here, but there's a loading dock in the center of the block. So that could cause um, some confusion or friction between delivery trucks, U-turning, and, and uh, uh, um, just people accessing the garage. So there is some localized um, congestion happening um, in that area. We do want to note also that we met with police department 
and the fire department, and they did raise uh, some concerns about life safety with the plaza option. Uh, because they like to have <coughs> access for emergency vehicles in an emergency situation, and they felt that by closing uh, the street, especially the south block where there's some larger buildings, that um, it would limit <coughs> their ability to, to respond as quickly as they would like. If we go with that option, we're gonna have to spend some considerable time with them mitigating those concerns. Okay, uh, that was, sort of the, the upshot of traffic. And I'm trying to move forward here. Oh, there we go. We also want to look at some cost estimates. So what we have here is, again, based on these are conceptual drawings, not final designs, we have uh, some ROM or rough order of magnitude uh, cost estimates to look at. And um, we have cost estimates for the streetscape improvements themselves, um, improvements that could be made in the public alley, as Mr. Calvert just uh, explained. We have a, a line item here for improvements in the passageways, whether those happen on private property or private dollars. We put a number in there for that. And we also have allowances for art elements, programming in the first year, and uh, general grounds maintenance uh, for these improvements in the first year. I think our analysis is that the costs are generally fairly consistent and close between the two with a, uh, the plaza option being more based on two items. One is that uh, we do, as, as Mr. Calver said, there might be more programming needs that happen in these larger spaces for the first year. And the other is that because we would have to reconfigure the entries of the garages, uh, the traffic control in the garages and restriping. We had to put a line item in for uh, the budget of that garage. And that's what made that, that particular option more expensive, the, meaning the plaza option, more expensive than the one-way street option. And then finally, I want to show you um, what we created an evaluation chart. We came up with a range of evaluation criteria based on our meetings with you and the RFP and, and stakeholder meetings um, that we could evaluate and give some sort of guidance on, on some of the thoughts of how you can choose between these schemes. So um, the first objective uh, was does it meet the project vision? And that project vision is, is will this really revitalize Artsakh as the heart of the arts and entertainment district. And we think both of these options will, will do that. We think it will become an exciting place in the city. It will catalyze a lot of private investment. And we think both of them will meet that objective. When it comes to minimizing traffic disruption or congestion, um, neither one will really cause congestion around the site in the, in the adjoining streets. But because of the internal congestion potential on the plaza scheme, uh, the advantage went to the one-way shared street option in terms of traffic. Um, supporting retail and restaurants, we think both of these will do that. Both of these schemes will, will do that. Uh, we have heard from the stakeholders, though, that there is um, a desire for some slow traffic. The, the idea of expanding pedestrian spaces is, is incredibly unanimously supported, but the idea of being able to have some through traffic to come in front of the stores is something that the tenants did tell us they liked, as well as the idea of delivery and pickup and some of the just operational things that stores need. So that's why we gave the check mark on the one-way street option there. Life safety concerns, we have to report back on that and say that there's less life safety concerns with the one-way street option than with the plaza. And economic initial costs, very similar. Um, uh, they definitely, um, a little bit of advantage to the one-way shared street option. I do wanna say that, that all of these schemes though can be phased over time and tested, so I wanna put that out there that at your discretion that could be uh, explored. And ease of ongoing activity, activation and programming, um, both can do that. We think that they're, because we're spreading out the spaces, they're more manageable spaces, the one-way shared street option maybe has the advantage there. Um, we love both options. We think they both have a tremendous amount of potential to be fantastic additions to the city. But based on this evaluation, we're, uh, as consultants, we're recommending the one-way street, shared street option as, as the way to go. 
So I think I would like to turn it back over to Jennifer Hiramoto. I just want to say thank you again for allowing us this uh, opportunity to work on this fantastic project. Thank you, Alan. So just to cl in closing, um, before we look to Council's feedback on some of the designs, and I'm, I'm sure you'll have some comments on this, um, our, our next step would be to um, have the Council hopefully select a preferred design option uh, and also to authorize the consultant team to proceed with Phase 2. Uh, within Phase 2 would include more developed designs um, and um, we're anticipating that we would be able to see that back in uh, in December. And then from there, uh, be able to start talking about moving forward with construction drawings. Uh, we do have members uh, from Studio 111 that's here as well. Oh, excuse me, uh, from Studio Movie Grill. So many studios these days. Um, so um, I know that they are a very important stakeholder and, and have some feedback on this. Uh, but that concludes our, our portion of this presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me call up Andrew Buckle from Studio Movie Grill. Is it Buckle or Bucky? Bucky. Bucky. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Uh, my name is Andrew Bucky. I'm the Vice President of Development for Studio Movie Grill. And um, we wanted to come here today and voice our support for this project. Uh, several years ago, when the Five Star Cinema was closing down, we took interest in that property. Unfortunately, the deal didn't work out for us at that time, but earlier this year, uh, the opportunity resurfaced for us, and during our due diligence um, in the pursuit of a lease for that property, um, talking with the city council, uh, city members and Jennifer's team, and through our due diligence, we came across the opportunity for the revitalization of this project that was taking place in the area. And frankly, that helps sway us to want to pursue a deal even more. And luckily, we're glad to say that we're, we're excited about being the newest member of the Glendale community. Um, we currently are a, the uh, dine-in movie theater concept. Um, we serve meals and drinks during the movie itself. Uh, we are the industry leader in America in that, that category. And we currently operate um, 32 units in 10 states. Um, we are growing rapidly. By this time next year, I'll probably have 42 units in operation, as I have seven under construction right now. And we are looking to move forward with more. So um, when we looked at this property and were able to strike a deal with the landlord on it, and we got together with Allen's group and got more up to date on the project here, um, we really felt the one-way um, traffic option would really help bolster our business and help us become a more integrated part of this program. Um, the, one with the, the current traffic pattern, although works for us, um, we just feel having that ability to drive more traffic through the neighborhood through the one-way option will be beneficial to us as well as our neighbors that we will be moving in with. So I just wanted to come up, voice our support for us, and tell you how excited we are to become a part of your community. Thank you. Thank you for coming out here. Um, I don't have any other cards, and I'll open it up to council discussion. So just to frame the issues, we have two choices. It's the one-way option or the plaza option. And that's what staff is looking for direction. Mr. Quintero. Okay, well, I'm very happy to uh, be discussing this. Um, so on the south block, I believe that the uh, one-way shared option is the best bet, including price-wise, but also um, just taking a look at what it uh, at what it looks like in the kind of commercial activity there. I just think the one way is the best way to, uh, to go. On the north block, I started off thinking the plaza was the best bet. But after consulting with some professional staff members, I've, uh, <laughs> I've come to uh, actually change my opinion. I think the uh, one way shared option is probably Certainly the best way to uh, uh, test it. Um, but there's no question, I think, that doing these two blocks, I think, is going to really make a difference. And I think it's going to become more of a place to kind of gather. And I think the businesses will certainly improve the new, uh, the new uh, uh, tenant coming into that dead space. It's been closed for a long time, I think that's going to certainly improve uh, uh, the zone. Um, 
In terms of the design, I'm very happy with everything that I see. I would say, though, that for the North Plaza, I think more shade, I think, would be a good way to uh, go, even if, if it's at a fairly high at a fairly high level. It's just getting hotter every summer, and summer seems to be extending. And I know in Spain they do this a lot, uh, where they'll have fabric types of uh, shades, and it's retracted in high winds or retracted in rain, which of course requires a little bit of maintenance or someone to physically go back and forth. Just think it gives it more of a sense of space and makes fe people feel uh, more comfortable. On the South Plaza, I'm not sure that would really work, but it would on the uh, North. Then I have a question. I assume that when I see that the uh, intersection of Broadway and Artsakh is painted and so forth, that that is part of the design that will actually do something uh, similar? Correct. We would look at some sort of treatment there to right. help stitch that together, I the North and South Plaza. I think that really ties both, uh, both sides uh, together. And then whatever other floor treatment, whether it's paint or whatever else can be done on the pedestrian portions, I think that's also uh, important. But all in all, I'm very impressed and very happy that uh, we're moving in that direction. Thank you, Mr. Carpetian. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, couple of quick questions just to clarify. Uh, there are no trees being removed, right? You're not removing any of the trees? Correct. Right. All the existing palm trees will, re will remain. Um, I think on the south side, I agree it's, it's one way street is the way to go. There are a couple of issues that I want to raise that uh, has to do with the, with the parking garage. Maybe the, the traffic consultant can uh, find my Right. Right now, the, the parking garage that sits between Harvard and, and Broadway, it's very heavily used. And exiting from that parking garage on the north, north exit, um, the way it's set up right now, uh, if you park inside the garage on 30-minute 30, 30 zone, you have to come up and make a U-turn inside the garage, almost a U-turn and then exit. The way it's set up right now, when you exit out, you can only make a left and go south. And by narrowing down that crosswalk, uh, it's, and the other traffic coming from north, I think this will create a, a bottleneck on that section. I think what we need to do is maybe look at that exiting from that the south block, the north exit, to have a chance to make a right and go to Broadway as well. Uh, I think that area needs to be uh, completely looked at because that will create a huge jam. Right now that, and especially with the drop-off area in front of Marketplace, uh, as it is today, sometimes it gets jammed. So that's something that we need to look at. On the south side, I like everything about it. The floor art is great. Uh, I think we need to do more of that, uh, the intersection or inside the plaza. On the north side, uh, my understanding is that we are raising the, 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 the street to make it level with the sidewalk. So, and that will give us the choice of having traffic going through or at special events closing it off and make it as a plaza uh, that we have today, basically. It's a, it's a, you call it the plaza option. Uh, I think we can go on, on e either either option. I would like to see a plaza, to be honest with you, and keep the existing that we have and, and add to it. But if, if not, maybe we can, uh, the way it's designed, it could be always revised uh, in the future. Um, the, Here. 
and also on the north north uh, block, when you're coming down, uh, I think we need to study if we only enter the garage and then only exit out. That option has to be studied as to if if that could be done. Right, like 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 you have it as an option on page seven, which if there's a special uh, event and you want to close the whole thing and have a larger plaza, then you enter the garage and you exit only because that's a long way in. So I think that option, I, mean, I, I like that option a lot if it's permanent, uh, but again, we, we see what my colleagues have to say. Uh, also, Councilmember, uh, Council Member Garpadian, can you put the mic towards you because they can't yes, hear you? Thank sorry. you. Yeah, and also, you know, I have three daughters, and uh, when the first one was born, everything we've done was in pink. The, the the room was pink, and everything we purchased was pink. That reminded me, it was a flashback. We have a lot of pink in everything we have in this in this uh, uh, in the in the plaza, the furniture, uh, even the some of the. The clothing that uh, some of the, the people are wearing are pink. Uh, page page eleven, all the all the uh, everything Excuse is in me, pink. Excuse me, council so, member, but yes. I happen to like pink. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Me, I don't. I, it's not that I dislike pink, but I think it's too much pink. In uh, page thirteen of the even the the walls of the garage are being painted pink. So, and the chess. I mean, the, I've never seen a, a, a chess uh, set with with pink. Pink pins. Uh, so, just just a, just a, uh, just an idea to look at different color combinations. Uh, and what is the? Uh, you know, we had some issues with street vending and street performers, and we had complaints about loud music, amplified music with street performers on, in front of some of our restaurants. And we we came up with the with the a zoning or or an ordinance that. Uh, said that they cannot be, you know, within the certain uh, feet of the, the entrances and they cannot disturb the businesses. How are we going to control that in this area? Because this was this would be a huge attraction for street performers and street vending, which I'm, I have a, some, some, some issues with because some of these restaurants, they spend millions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of dollars. They put all the permits. They go through the, the, uh, the hustle and bustle of, you know, getting the, the health department to approve them. And then somebody puts a cart in front of their, their restaurant and uh, has more sales than they do. And I don't think that's fair. So what is, what is it that, do we have a, a, a law that we can point out and, and control this area? Or how, how would that work? Um, notwithstanding the, the street vending uh, piece because there's state law that that governs that and and Ms. Van Mijn can can touch on that shortly but putting that aside for for a quick second in terms of the programming piece um, that I think is something that we would be looking at for uh, the arts and entertainment district um, based on what we have today in terms of the pilot that we have and what we would have in the future um, for both the north block and the south block of uh, Artsakh uh, we would have to program that area and we would have very specific guidelines in terms of programming the area and our ability to be able to govern um, kind of the use of that area um, and, and that would be within the control of the city of Glendale. Now the street vending uh, piece, if, if Ms. Van Myden wants to touch on that real quickly, is something that we will be bringing to city council um, soon. Uh, I would hope in the next uh, month, I believe we'll bring it in September if I'm not mistaken, um, related to state law and some of the things that we can do by way of our ordinance to tighten certain things up. However, our hands are, are pretty tied based on um, our ability to be able to police uh, our ability to say, no, you can't um, have vending opportunities within a street corner. But that will be coming to the city council at some, at some uh, point in the near future. Um, but the programming, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the, of the council, council member Garpetian, has to do with really specific um, programming that will uh, allow the community to understand and know what that programming is on a weekly basis. So they will know that 
parts of, let's say, Artsakh will have jazz music on certain nights. They'll get used to that. They will know that they, we will have an art show maybe once a month. I mean, I'm just kind of putting out okay. ideas. So they'll know the first, you know, Wednesday of the month is, is an art, you know, um, evening with some wine tasting or whatever it may be. And so uh, we will program that, and that will take effort, and that will take staffing, and that will take funds for us to be able to do it appropriately. Um, and, and so we, we can control it by way of programming, I think. Okay. And uh, one other quick point, Mr. Mary Pernay. Um On North Block, where did my notes go? We're bringing the street vending um, item back in November. Mr. Garcia is working on some uh, uh, staff work in, in the back room and clearly is watching, so he sent me a text. It's coming back in November. Yes, on page seven, uh, the exit side from the garage, which is on the south side of the, the, the parking garage, south uh, opening basically, when you exit, and you have the alley across the street for the valet for some of the businesses. I think we need to make sure that they don't, because this is a one way south, right? Am I correct? So uh, cars coming out from the alley that they want to park in the garage, I think the way that has to be designed is uh, they, won't, they won't just interfere. And this is, a, this is important because uh, cars coming out, exiting, uh, they don't know, most of them would not know that there's a cross traffic coming across that alley. So the way it's designed has to be maybe a dedicated lane for the for the uh, the, the valet parking, or so they won't they won't have this this issue because that would that would create a huge issue. So we want to accommodate everyone. So if there is a, a dedicated lane for them to enter the garage, that would that would be. Uh, I think we should we should look into that as well. So with that, and I was really shocked by the numbers of um, the traffic count. How I thought that the numbers would be much higher, but it's not. So it won't it won't have any negative effect. And lastly, the what Mr. Quintero mentioned uh, about having shade shade structures. I think page 23 have the umbrellas, which are very similar to Spain. Uh, it's, it's, it looks great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Devine. Sure. Um, well. I'm just really excited about this because I think it's a great, great design, a great concept, and I certainly w am uh, leaning towards and am in favor of the one-way shared uh, street option. Uh, I think it offers a, a dual purpose. We can close it, we can open it, change it however we want, and I think that kind of flexibility is, is uh, absolutely uh, uh, imperative in, in this uh, uh, entertainment district. I think if you look at the conceptual options evaluation scorecard, I think that just about uh, seals the deal for the one way. Um, I have to um, say also uh, keeping in mind the life safety issues in the plaza are very, very important. So um, another reason for the one way. Um, and uh, in my conversations with the businesses, when I've been down uh, in uh, the plaza, uh, with it closed and um, in my conversations asking them how, well, how do you feel about this and they all t every one of them said that that closed area cost them business and so I think uh, I, I see where you're all coming from that uh, this is absolutely the best option for businesses because nothing beats success than um, better than having traffic going by, and especially if it's slow moving traffic. I learned that up in, in Montrose. Uh, the, the slower it moves, the more they see, and uh, they'll spot you and say, I didn't know you were here, and, and now I know, and I'll be back. So um, I definitely feel that's, that's the way to go. I have one question about, um, since we're making these two blocks one way, would we have to make an alternate street one way in the opposite direction. And I don't know if that's a question for staff or for the um, uh, designers, the parking folks, uh, traffic. 
Um, I, I've, I'm a, um, a, a supporter of one-way streets, so um, I have always felt that if we had a one-way street and, you know, one way going across town and one way coming back would be great for the city and traffic. Uh, but now we have just two blocks. But would that, um, w would it be a, um, uh, advisable to do another street in the one way in that section or is that just kind of like not necessary? Yeah, good afternoon, uh, members of the City Council. My name is Claire Look Yeager. I'm a principal with the firm of Lynn Scott Law and Greenspan Engineers. Uh, based on the volumes, based on the reported levels of service, which of course are based on uh, lane configurations that exist today along Brand and Louise, are two parallel corridors, we do, do not see a glaring reason to convert any parallel street to another one-way uh, operation. We believe the volumes that would be shifted and redistributed are low enough that it would not cause a significant traffic impact for the conversion uh, to one-way southbound operation. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, then um, that kind of uh, seals my, my decision, in fact, that for the uh, one-way uh, one version. Um, and also, I was I had asked about the um, the entertainment area in the south block, and uh, you're going to be probably because we have a lot of a lot of local talent that would love to to use that uh, area for their to show their talent. So uh, um, I'm I'm glad you know that we we can program that and give them the opportunity to uh, to enjoy the space. Thank you. That's mine. Mr. Regajani. You know, uh, Mr. Mayor, when you are last or born before last, they say everything, so there is not much to say. So I'm glad I have to say a few issues I have to raise. One is uh, I raised this issue about where the south portion of this project is and close to home goods. I raised the issue with the staff that we have to have such a situation that big trucks, they will come on the option one. See, on the option one, home goods, the big stores there, big trucks will come to deliver things. So they have to have room to be able to go inside their parking structure and if we keep that narrow very narrow it's going to block the traffic on the street i guess i mentioned before this issue and you touched the issue but still i don't see the option of course this is now the first phase and it will be lots of changes on this project so you will consider i'm just mentioning to our consultant uh, to Studio 111 to consider that because later, uh, you know, minor things, it, it, uh, they forget to do it, the consultants, the engineers, the architects, and then become major problem. The other issue I want to raise is on this conceptual options evaluation scorecard. I mean, when engineers and uh, architects, they want to, although I'm in favor of option one, this is page 31, uh, page, yeah, as you see here, uh, you, they put like there are six items here. All six are kind of in favor of option one project. So there are other issues that it's not uh, been mentioned in there. But however, since I'm in favor of option one, the one with street, I pass. So <laughs> otherwise I would add the issues that uh, these are not the only issues should be considered. But however, this is fair enough for me. And uh, I think uh, the issue which has been raised here by uh, council member Garapetian that the north portion of uh, south 
part. So the north portion of sad part. If you make it two way, two ways, I will worry if you show it there. Because this is a street comes from Wilson all the way one way. And halfway in middle, if there, this is not Halfway in the middle, if you turn it, make it the south portion of the south uh, one way, and the north portion of south portion two ways, people who would walk in there, they will be confused. So because the street from Wilson to Broadway is one way, and then from Harvard to the middle of Broadway and Harvard is one way. All of a sudden, this portion uh, between Broadway and to the parking lot will be two ways. I think that will be dangerous. That's what I'm worried. Traffic-wise, if it becomes two ways, will be better. But safety-wise, that will be dangerous uh, to do. I mean, to change it to two ways. That's my opinion. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's remember that this uh, exchange was a much ballyhooed uh, development in the city 30, perhaps even over 30 years ago. And uh, it was intended to be a vibrant, exciting uh, street just parallel to brand, and it never lived up to those expectations. Uh, and for many years, decades, the city didn't know what to do with it. Um, it was in uh, 2014, after uh, having a discussion with the, the then owners of the theater, the MGN uh, Five Star Theater, that uh, we sat down and started talking about some of their concerns, and it was um, back then, even before Councilman Sinanyan got elected in 2015, that we were talking about a one-way street down uh, what's now Artsakh Avenue and uh, improving some of the uh, amenities there, such as the water feature and all that. Um, so I'm glad to see that it has, has taken uh, root and has uh, continued uh, to this point. I think it's... Um, I think it's a great investment in this two block area. I don't see those businesses who were so outraged that we would change the name of Maryland to Artsakh and stomp their feet and cry uh, how they're being abused and how unfair the city is to them and their businesses. I don't see them here today commenting on the millions and millions of dollars. This is what, eight million or seven million is, uh, is one of the estimates. So where are you? I mean, are we treating you so unfairly? No, we're not. In fact, just the opposite. We're focusing our attention on this two block area uh, in a much greater extent than we have to any other portion of the city of Glendale. So I don't want to hear any complaints. You know who you are out there. Um, this is going to be an exciting and great uh, two block area. I um, personally, would prefer the one-way shared street option. I think that it gives us the flexibility, especially in the north block, to, uh, to permit traffic to flow during the uneventful uh, hours or days. But when we do have something exciting, and we do have a lot of programming there, program has gotten quite exciting, that we can put those uh, bollards in and uh, protect the space uh, from the residents. The, the south portion, I believe, uh, I don't want to get into traffic design at this point, but I, I do much rather prefer the one way also on the southern portion because it keeps the traffic uh, flowing through. And I think some of the traffic studies that we have uh, back that up. So that's the general direction that I'm, I'm giving. And uh, I think we have Four, four, or uh, I'm not sure. I think Mr. Carpetian wanted Plaza, or was 
throwing that out as a suggestion for the. This no, I, after listening to all of my colleagues, I'm in favor of that one. Go along with because, the one yeah, way. because you have the flexibility yeah. of, of uh, making it. In the future, if you want to make it a plaza option, you can do that as well. So, I'm so okay. it's, it's great. Uh, as I said, it's quite an investment. We haven't given up on this area. Uh, you know, I don't know what else a city can do to energize a two block area. My, my, Spanish, uh, my Spaniard colleague accurately, uh, I don't know if you were around. In fact, I think you were off council, but, but I presented uh, the, uh, yes. the vision and some of the photos from Spain. Uh, referencing the From Malaga, yes. the, um, Malaga. the uh, shade treatments, which really upgrade the area, make it very uh, chic uh, as well as comfortable for for the residents. The Spaniards uh, know what they're doing. In fact, they have in some of those malls, they have very high quality polished stone and you know great amenities with trees, with uh, uh, posts, with flowers and. We can get to that. We can decorate. We can put the ornaments on the Christmas tree uh, at a later point. But uh, there's some great examples out there, uh, outside our, our borders. Okay. Move so, one my colleagues. Move one eight. Six. And that's with the design A option. With the one way. Uh, yes. One way. Okay. We have a motion. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Devine. Yes. Garbettian. Yes. Quintero. Si. <laughs> Agajanya? Yes. And Mayor Nigeria? Yes. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. We are Second. adjourned. I call to order the.